Welcome to the Bible Quiz. In this video, we continue to delve into the life of Job by focusing on a pivotal phase, the dialogue between Job and his four friends. Job, a righteous man facing unprecedented trials, engages in a profound dialogue with his four friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar, and Elihu. This discourse delves into the complexities of human suffering, the nature of God's justice, and the intricacies of Job's own faith journey. As we unravel the dialogue between Job and his friends, we'll gain insights into the diverse perspectives presented, the challenges faced, and the profound lessons embedded in this rich biblical narrative. We designed 25 interactive multiple choice quizzes to enrich your Bible study, adding an element of fun while making the learning process more accessible. Let's get started. Question one. What was the main theme in the conversation between Job and his friends? A, arguing about the nature of God's justice. B, arguing about the cause of Job's suffering. C, both A and B are correct. D, both A and B are incorrect. You get 10 seconds. That's C, both A and B are correct. The main theme in the conversation between Job and his friends involved both arguing about the cause of Job's suffering and discussing the nature of God's justice. Question 2. Who was the first of the friends to respond to Job after he cursed the day of his birth? A. Eliphaz B. Elihu C. Zophar D. Bildad you get 10 seconds. That's A, Eliphaz. Job, chapter 4, verse 1. Then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, After Job cursed the day of his birth, Eliphaz was the first of Job's friends to respond to him. Eliphaz initiated the series of speeches delivered by Job's friends, attempting to offer counsel and insights on the reasons behind Job's suffering. Question 3. Which principle did Eliphaz remind when talking to Job in the first dialogue as recorded in Job chapter 4, verses 7 to 11? A. You reap what you sow. B. Pride comes before a fall. C. To err is human, to forgive divine. D. Actions speak louder than words. You get 10 seconds. That's A. You reap what you sow. Job chapter 4 verses 7 to 11. Eliphaz reminded Job about the principle that those who plowed evil and sowed trouble would ultimately reap the consequences of their actions, reflecting the concept of reaping what one sows. This is a principle that is repeatedly taught in the scriptures. Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 to 9. Proverbs chapter 22 verses 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. Question 4. According to Job chapters 4 to 27, what did Job's three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar believe to be the cause of his suffering? A. Test of faith. B. Result of hidden sin. C. Divine reward. D. Random misfortune. You get 10 seconds.
That's B, result of hidden sin. Job chapter 4 to 27. Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar all attributed Job's suffering to hidden sin. They maintained that calamities befell Job as a consequence of his supposed transgressions, forming a central theme in their dialogues with him. Question 5. On what basis did Job's three friends insist that Job's suffering was the result of his sins? A. Job's confession. B. Astrological signs. C. Their traditional belief. D. Divine Revelation. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Their traditional belief. Job chapters 4 to 27. Job's three friends argued that Job's suffering was the result of his sins, based on the traditional belief that suffering and misfortune were punishments for sin. They believed that Job's afflictions were a direct consequence of his wrongdoing, and that he must have committed some grave sin to warrant such severe punishment from God. This belief was rooted in the idea of divine retribution, which was prevalent in ancient religious and cultural contexts. Remember to hit that subscribe and join our community to stay updated on all the amazing content we have planned. Question 6. What advice did Job's three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, give to Job in dealing with his troubles? A. Cursed God and died. B ignored the suffering. C. Repented and sought forgiveness. D. Offered sacrifices for appeasement. You get 10 seconds. That's C repented and sought forgiveness. Job chapters 4 to 27. Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar advised Job to repent and seek forgiveness as a solution to his troubles, believing his suffering was a result of hidden sins. Their advice centered on the idea that divine reconciliation through repentance could bring relief from afflictions according to their understanding of divine justice. Question 7. Which of the following was one of the conclusion of Bildad when die-cussing about Job's suffering as recorded in Job chapter 8 verses 5 to 6? A. God is indifferent to human suffering. B. If Job repented, God would restore him. C. Job's suffering was a result of bad luck. D. Job's friends were responsible for his suffering. You get 10 seconds. That's B. If Job repented, God would restore him. Job chapter 8 verses 5 to 6. But if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state. Bildad concluded that if Job sought God earnestly, repented, and maintained purity and uprightness, God would restore him to prosperity. Bildad believed that repentance and righteousness were the keys to Job's restoration. Question 8. How did Job respond to his three friends' accusations and assumptions? A. He remained silent. B. He apologized for his actions. C. He agreed with them after the last speech of Eliphaz. D. He consistently maintained about his innocence. You get 10 seconds.
That's D. He consistently maintained about his innocence. Job, chapters 4 to 27. In the face of his friend's accusations, Job adamantly asserted his innocence, vehemently rejecting their claims. He maintained his integrity, consistently challenging their assumptions about the connection between his suffering and personal wrongdoing, creating a central tension in the dialogues. Question 9. After Job's poignant arguments to defend himself, how did the speeches of Job's three friends become as, as their conversations come to a close? A. Silent and contemplative. B. Apologetic and silent. C. Constructive and empathetic. D. Repetitive and increasingly hostile. You get 10 seconds. That's D, repetitive and increasingly hostile. Job chapters 4 to 27. As Job defended himself, his friend's speeches grew repetitive and increasingly hostile. Frustrated by Job's steadfast denial of guilt, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar intensified their accusations. The dialogues evolved into a cycle of repetitive arguments, highlighting the widening gap between Job's perspective and the unyielding convictions of his friends. Question 10. Which of the following was one of the conclusions of Zophar when die cussing about Job's suffering as recorded in Job chapter 11 verse 6? A. God was unjust in punishing Job. B. Job's suffering was a random occurrence. C. Job deserved worse than he got. D. Job was blameless and undeserving of suffering. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Job deserved worse than he got. Job chapter 11 verse 6. And disclose to you the secrets of wisdom, for true wisdom has two sides. Know this. God has even forgotten some of your sin. Zophar concluded that Job deserved even worse than he got. This conclusion emphasizes that his suffering was a merciful outcome compared to what he might have rightfully faced due to his perceived sins. Question 11. Which of the following was one of the conclusions of Eliphaz when discussing Job's suffering as recorded in Job chapter 22, verse 5? A. Job's sin was great. B. Job's righteousness was commendable. C. Job's suffering was an unfortunate accident. D. Job's friends were responsible for his suffering. You get 10 seconds. That's A. Job's sin is great. Job chapter 22, verse 5. Is not your wickedness great? Are not your sins endless? Eliphaz concluded that Job's sins were great. This conclusion, one more time, attributes Job's suffering to his perceived wickedness and transgressions. This reflects the recurring theme in the dialogues where Job's friends link his hardships to his assumed wrongdoing. Question 12. Faced with unfounded accusations, what did Job wish in his final defense as recorded in Job chapter 31, verses 35 to 37? A. Someone heard him. B. His accuser put the accusations in writing. C. He could directly present his defense to the Almighty. D. All of the above. You get 10 seconds.
That's D, all of the above. Job, chapter 31, verses 35 to 37. Job wished for his accuser to write down the accusations against him and for God to give him the opportunity to defend himself. He expressed a desire for the written charges to be carried on his shoulder like a crown and for him to be able to account for every step he had taken. This was Job's plea for a fair opportunity to address the accusations brought against him. Question 13. After Job's final defense, why did his three friends stop speaking? A. Because they were at a stalemate. B. Because Job would no longer listen. C. Because Job was righteous in his own eyes. D. Because they had nothing more to say to Job. You get 10 seconds. That's C, because Job was righteous in his own eyes. Job chapter 32, verse 1. So these three men stopped answering Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. Job's three friends stopped speaking because Job, in their view, remained steadfast in his righteousness, refusing to admit any guilt or wrongdoing. This led to a stalemate in their discussions. Question 14. Why did Elihu wait for the others to finish before speaking? A. Because he arrived later. B. Because he was the youngest. C because he was a servant. D, because he was the wisest of them all. You get 10 seconds. That's B, because he was the youngest. Job, chapter 32, verse four. Now Elihu had waited before speaking to Job because they were older than he. Elihu waited to speak because of his respect for the older men present, adhering to the customary etiquette of allowing elders to express their opinions first. Question 15. Why was Elihu angry with Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar? A. Because they did not comfort Job. B because they had not out Job's error. C, because they had not defended the Almighty. D, because they had no way to refute Job. You get 10 seconds. That's D, because they had no way to refute Job. Job, chapter 32, verse 3. He was also angry with the three friends, because they had found no way to refute Job, and yet had condemned him. Elihu was angry with Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, because, despite their attempts, they had found no way to refute Job's arguments. Yet, they had condemned him without providing a compelling counterargument. Question 16. Why was Elihu angry with Job? A. Because he was accusing God of wrongdoing. B. Because he would not listen to the friend's advice. C. Because he would not give up his plea of innocence. D. Because Job was justifying himself rather than God. You get 10 seconds. That's D, because Job was justifying himself rather than God. Job, chapter 32, verse 2. But Elihu, son of Barakel, the Buzite, of the family of Ram, became very angry with Job for justifying himself rather than God. 
Elihu's anger with Job stemmed from Job's perceived focus on justifying himself rather than acknowledging God's righteousness. Elihu believed that Job should prioritize the justification of God over defending his own innocence. Question 17. What authority did Elihu claim to speak by? A. The Spirit of God. B. Ancient scrolls and scriptures. C. Cultural traditions and customs. D. Personal wisdom and knowledge. You get 10 seconds. That's A, the Spirit of God. Job chapter 33, verses 1 to 7. My words come from an upright heart. My lips sincerely speak what I know. The Spirit of God has made me. Elihu emphasized that his words are spoken sincerely and without deceit, and that the Spirit of God had made him. Elihu presented himself as a vessel for the divine message, speaking with the authority and guidance of the Spirit of God. Question 18. What different ways did God speak to people in, according to Elihu in Job chapter 33, verses 12 to 22? A. Through dreams. B. Through the affliction of pain. C. Through visions of the night. D. All of the above. You get 10 seconds. That's D, all of the above. Job chapter 33, verses 12 to 22. Elihu described the various ways in which God speaks to people. He mentioned that God speaks in different ways, including through dreams, visions of the night, and through the affliction of pain. Elihu suggested that God used these different methods of communication to instruct and guide individuals, leading them to repentance and righteousness. Question 19. What did Elihu say about God in Job chapter 34 verses 10 to 30? A. God's ignorance of human affairs. B. God's righteousness and justice. C. God's indifference towards humanity. D. God's arbitrary and unfair judgments. You get 10 seconds. That's B, God's righteousness and justice. Job chapter 34, verses 10 to 30. Elihu emphasized that God is just and does not show partiality and that he judged people according to their deeds. Elihu also highlights God's omniscience and sovereignty, stating that God saw and knew everything and that no one could hide from his knowledge. Elihu affirmed that God did not act wickedly and that his judgments were always just. Additionally, he emphasized that God's purpose is to ensure that the wicked are punished and the righteous are exalted. Question 20. How did Elihu describe Job's reply to God in Job, chapter 34, verses 31 to 37? A. Rebellion and defiance. B. Frustration and confusion. C. Complete understanding and agreement. D. Humble submission and acceptance. You get 10 seconds. That's A. Rebellion and defiance. Job chapter 34, verses 31 to 37. 
Elihu described Job's reply to God as being marked by rebellion and defiance. He accused Job of speaking without knowledge and multiplying his words against God. Elihu asserted that Job adds rebellion to his sin and claps his hands among them, indicating that Job's response to God is characterized by disobedience and a lack of reverence. Question 21. According to Elihu, how did a person's sin or righteousness affect God in Job chapter 35? A. It altered God's character and nature. B. It did not change God's greatness. C. It made God indifferent to human affairs. D. It diminished God's power and authority. You get 10 seconds. That's B. It did not change God's greatness. Job chapter 35 verses 1 to 8. Elihu discussed how a person's sin or righteousness does not affect God in the sense of adding to or diminishing his greatness. Elihu argued that when a person sins, it did not harm God, and when a person was righteous, it did not benefit him. Instead, Elihu emphasized that a person's actions affected themselves and other people. Question 22. Why did Elihu say God did not always answer people who cry out to him in Job chapter 35 verses 9 to 15? A. Because God was capricious and arbitrary. B. Because God was unaware of human prayers. C. Because of their pride and lack of genuine repentance. D. Because of their wealth and prosperity. You get 10 seconds. That's C because of their pride and lack of genuine repentance. Job chapter 35 verses 9 to 15. Elihu explained that God did not always answer people who cry out to him because of their pride and lack of genuine repentance. He suggested that some people cried out to God because of their suffering, but they did not seek him with a sincere heart. Elihu emphasized that God did not listen to empty pleas or to those who were filled with arrogance. Question 23. How did Elihu describe the greatness of God in Job chapter 36 verses 22 to 33? A. By emphasizing his power. B. By emphasizing his wisdom. C. By emphasizing his sovereignty. D. All of the above. You get 10 seconds. That's D, all of the above. Job chapter 36, verses 22 to 33. Elihu described the greatness of God by emphasizing his power, wisdom, and sovereignty. He spoke of God's unsearchable greatness and the wonders that he performed. Elihu highlighted God's control over the weather, the clouds, and the lightning, illustrating his authority over nature. He also emphasized God's justice and righteousness, stating that he did not pervert justice. Question 24. In the last confirmation as recorded in Job, chapter 37, verses 21 to 23, Elihu said God was exalted in all of the following, except A. Wisdom B. Power C. Justice D. Great Righteousness You get 10 seconds.
That's A, wisdom. Job chapter 37 verses 21 to 23. The Almighty is beyond our reach and exalted in power. In His justice and great righteousness, He does not oppress. Elihu said that God is exalted in power, justice, and great righteousness, but did not mention wisdom. Question 25. What advice did Elihu conclude his speech with in Job chapter 37, verse 24? A. People worshipped him. B. People revered him. C. People submitted to him. D. People were silent before him. You get 10 seconds. That's B. People revered him. Job chapter 37 verse 24. Therefore people revere him. For does he not have regard for all the wise in heart? Elihu advises that people should revere God, emphasizing the importance of showing deep respect and awe for the Almighty. This reverence reflects a profound acknowledgement of God's greatness and authority, guiding individuals to approach Him with humility and honor. Oh wow! What an enlightening exploration we've just concluded, unraveling the intricacies of the dialogue between Job and his four friends. Now it's your turn to share your thoughts. Leave a comment below, letting us know the number of correct answers you achieved and the valuable insights you gained from delving into the profound discussions of Job and his companions. Your reflections contribute significantly to our collective understanding and serve as inspiration for others to embark on their own reflective journeys. If you found this exploration engaging, don't keep it to yourself. Share this video with your friends and family, encouraging them to join in on this enlightening discussion. Together, let's create a ripple effect of understanding and appreciation for the timeless wisdom embedded in the dialogue between Job and his four friends. Thank you for being part of this enlightening adventure. Let's continue the conversation, keep sharing, and keep learning. Until our next exploration, stay curious and stay connected.